heading out a solution is also responsible for the development of geysers. Silica coats the walls of cracks and fissures, creating a nearly pressure-tight seal. Over time, constrictions can form in these plumbing systems, which allow pressure to build. As the pressure builds, geysers can begin to overflow or toss small jets of steam and water. This action is called preplay. When this happens, the pressure on the superheated water below drops and some of that water expands into steam. When water turns to steam, it expands up to 1,500 times. This powerful steam pocket rises to the surface and all the water above is thrown into the air. There are two types of geysers, fountain and cone. Fountain geysers erupt out of a pool of water and cone geysers, like Old Faithful, erupt out of a geyserite cone. If all the water in a feature is far below ground level, that feature is called a fumarole. Also known as a steam vent, they can be the hottest of the hot. The small amount of water that does exist is heated by rocks and the resulting steam rises through the plumbing system. It is possible to see many of the world's largest geysers from our new camera. Old Faithful, Beehive, Grand, Daisy, Lion, Giant, and Giantist will all be in view at times along with many smaller geysers. Old Faithful, the closest geyser to the camera, has an average interval between eruptions of around 90 minutes. Old Faithful's eruption averages around 130 feet in height, but ranges from 106 feet to 180 feet. Eruption times are predicted whenever the Old Faithful Visitor Center is open. Those predictions are posted on our original Old Faithful webcam. Be sure to visit our Inside Yellowstone and Yellowstone In-Depth videos to learn more about Yellowstone's issues, features, and processes. They are available under Photos and Multimedia on the official Yellowstone National Park website, www.nps.gov. There is no other place on Earth like the Upper Geyser Basin here in Yellowstone National Park. The entire basin is about two miles long and a half a mile wide and includes the features found at Black Sand Basin and Biscuit Basin as well as those found in the Old Faithful area. Of the world's 600 geysers, nearly 150 are found in the Upper Geyser Basin. Yellowstone contains over 10,000 thermal features including geysers, hot springs, fumaroles, and mud pots. That's more than the rest of the world combined. To understand why we find such a unique system of hydrothermal features here, we need to look at the region's geologic past. Yellowstone National Park sits atop one of the world's largest volcanoes. This area has experienced three major volcanic eruptions in the last two million years. The last one was approximately 640,000 years ago. That eruption created a caldera, or crater, that covers much of what is today Yellowstone National Park. The caldera is estimated to be 30 by 45 miles in size. Later, rhyolitic lava flows filled most of the caldera. These lava flows provided silica, one of the key ingredients needed to form Yellowstone's geysers and other thermal features. By adding heat and water, the stage is set for thermal features to develop. The heat comes from a magma chamber that is quite near the surface beneath Yellowstone. It is believed to be five to eight miles below the park. Water falling as rain and snow percolates down through cracks and fissures in the earth. As this heavy, cool water sinks, it creates convection currents with the lighter heated water. That heated water begins its long journey back toward the surface. Due to the pressure created by overlying rock, the silica-rich water can reach temperatures above 400 degrees Fahrenheit without boiling. This superheated water holds silica in solution. As the water rises, it begins to cool and some of those minerals